Lizzie 2018 A lady goes to work as a maid to a wealthy family. There, she discovers firsthand that the head of the house abuses his power, making friends with his daughter. They try to make things right. There is someone lying lifeless in a room. A lady gets questioned about it by a man. She explains what she was doing when it happened. The man asks if the deceased had any enemies, and the scene cuts off. Six months earlier, the lady comes to a house and tells the woman who greets her that she's the new housemaid. Her name is Bridget Sullivan. The woman, Abby, invites her in and briefly describes her duties to her. Then she brings Bridget to her room. Shortly after, a girl enters the room to collect something. She says that her name is Lizzie, and she shows Bridget some compassion. She goes to her parents, Abby and Andrew, and tells them that she's going to the theater. Her father tells her she's not allowed to go by herself. This leads to a slight argument between them. It ends with him telling her she could go, but not stay after midnight. After some time, Lizzie is at the theater. A lady there speaks to her with a rude attitude, so Lizzie humiliates the lady. After that, she is totally engaged in observing the opera. As she watches, she starts getting dizzy. Soon enough, she experiences a seizure. Later, she lies in bed at home. When she awakens, a lady is there with her. She tells her that everything will be okay. In the next scene, Lizzie holds a pigeon in her hands and treats it with care. She puts it back in its holding and reads a book. Bridget comes in, and Lizzie asks her if she ever went to school. The maid says she had attended school for a couple of years. Lizzie asks her if she is afraid, because females are the ones who need to know things. Bridget and Lizzie read together. The former struggles while the latter educates her. Lizzie's father, Andrew, is looking at a note. It says that no one will save him from what's coming. Later, he comes to Bridget and tells her that he approves of her work. He also gives her a small raise. Later, at night, while she lies in bed, someone enters her room. It is revealed to be Andrew, and he starts touching her. After he is finished, he goes back to his wife, who lies in bed awake. The next day, Lizzie comes to Bridget in the barn. The girl is upset. The scene shifts to her, finding a note near the front door. It says that their son will find them. At night, someone knocks loudly on their door. Andrew gets up and equips himself with a gun. The others are up as well. Outside, Andrew yells after the mystery person to show themselves. The individual does not obey him. The day after, Lizzie tells her father they should inform the constable of the threats. He does not want to do it. She asks him if he did something bad, and he scolds her for being arrogant and for engaging in gossip. They are vulnerable, he says, because of her. Afterward, Lizzie prays alone at the church. When she comes home, she finds her uncle John there. Andrew shows him the threat letters they received. He says he's mostly worried about his daughters. He believes that they know nothing about the matters of the world, especially Lizzie. As he says this, she sits nearby, overhearing it. Later, her father comes up to her and gives her a locket containing her mother's picture. He wants them to start a new beginning, and so does Lizzie. Lizzie starts picking up various jewelry, clearly frustrated. She goes to a pawn shop and presents it, asking how much money she could get for it. Later, an officer is at their home. He asks Bridget if she was inside the house at the time of the robbery. He politely asks to see her room, but Andrew appears and says that will not be needed. He wants to talk with the officer alone. As he walks away, we hear him saying that the owner of the pawn shop visited him earlier and explained the situation. He comes back, holding a hatchet. Andrew goes to the bird's coop and gets rid of the birds. Lizzie is there to watch it happen, and she sobs, devastated. The family is dining at the table. Bridget brings the dinner to them and it looks like it's Lizzie's birds. She does not want to eat it, but Andrew demands her to do so. She calls him a coward, causing the man to smack her. She storms out of the room, throwing her cooked bird on the table as she leaves. Then she hides in her room and locks the door. She is overwhelmed by the day's events and faints. An uncertain amount of time later, she wakes up in her bed. Her sister, Emma, tells her they will take her away. She leaves, and Bridget tends to Lizzie. She talks to the family attorney and asks him if John will be the custodian of her inheritance. The man does not answer her directly, and she complains that John is unfit. Bridget brings her a letter to read. She reads it aloud, and it reveals that Bridget's mother has passed away. This brings the girl to tears, and she hugs Lizzie. Subsequently, Andrew comes to her room and remarks on the tragedy that befell her. He tries to comfort her, but comes onto her quite strongly and is mainly comforting himself. This prompts Bridget to look at the hatchet lying nearby. When Lizzie tends to the laundry, she finds a thank-you note from Bridget. At night, Lizzie awakens because of a sound. She quietly walks up to Bridget's room and hears her father in there. She runs back to her room and breaks a mirror. She places the shards near Bridget's door. While Lizzie lies in bed and waits, she eventually hears her father leaving the room and making painful sounds. This brings a slight smile to her face. The following day, Bridget comes to Lizzie and asks her if she thinks her father would recommend her if Bridget leaves. Lizzie does not answer, and the maid leaves frustrated. She soon comes to Lizzie to apologize, and Lizzie apologizes to her as well. She confesses to being ashamed of being Andrew's daughter. She has been lying to herself for a long time now. Bridget asks her why she is so kind to her, but the scene cuts before an answer is given. Bridget finds a note directed to her while tending to a bed. It makes her smile. On the stairs, she gives a note to Lizzie. Afterward, Lizzie shows Emma that the handwriting of the threats matches the writing on their father's contract. Lizzie believes it is John and that he is playing on their father's fear. 
He is manipulating him to sign over their inheritance. Shortly after, John comes home. Lizzie confronts him about the threats. He responds by grabbing her and saying that she is worthless. As he keeps holding her against the wall, Bridget appears and calls for her. This causes him to let her go. The next morning, Lizzie comes to Bridget. She informs Lizzie that John left early today. She thanks Bridget for what she did. They sit next to each other, and Lizzie rests her head on her friend's shoulder. Andrew comes home and asks Abby about Bridget's whereabouts. She knows why he's asking, and tells him that she's surprised by how many ways he can humiliate himself. The man just stands there, looking at her. In the coop, Lizzie and Bridget get intimate. While they engage in the act, Andrew comes to the window and sees it happening. When the night comes, he grabs Bridget and calls her an indecent word. He makes her say it too, and she does. On the next day, Andrew warns Lizzie to no longer engage with Bridget on non-maid-related matters. But Lizzie insists that she is her friend. He says the attachment she formed with her is unhealthy. He calls her an abomination. She retaliates by saying they are now equal. The man leaves, and Abby comes out, saying that he won't forgive her this time. She adds that he will send her away soon. The next scene, Lizzie promises Bridget that she won't let anyone hurt her. Lizzie finds her father's will and burns it. Later on, someone grabs the hatchet and there is a gruesome scream. That is when the scene from the beginning repeats. Lizzie yells for Bridget because someone took the life of her father. Bridget comes down and Lizzie tells her to call the police. Later, the police flood the household and pictures get taken of the two lifeless bodies. Lizzie tells the man that is interrogating her that everyone alive has enemies. An indoor funeral takes place. Once it is over, Emma and John talk about Andrew's will. It is nowhere to be found. After that, an attorney talks to Emma. He believes he has figured out the motive for the crime. Emma and Lizzie will acquire a very big fortune. The way he says it makes Emma believe it is a vile insinuation that one of them took their father's life. The attorney tells her the judge might be sympathetic toward Lizzie if she pleads guilty. But Emma does not want her to do that. The man responds that Lizzie will therefore be executed. She gets taken into a jail cell. The next scene has Lizzie appearing in court. The attorney talks to a chemistry professor and asks him what he discovered about the murder weapon. The professor tells him the details and says that mostly bird remains were found on the hatchet. Back at the house, we see John searching frantically for Andrew's will. Emma goes into Bridget's room and sees her packing. She states that her service with them is not yet complete. She also says that if Bridget lets her sister hang for this, she will haunt her forever. Afterward, John visits Lizzie in her cell. He informs her that Abby lost her life 90 minutes before Andrew did. Had he lost his life first, Lizzie and Emma would get nothing and Abby's family would inherit everything. But since it happened the other way around, Lizzie and her sister get the inheritance. John says he's going to find Andrew's will so that Lizzie gets nothing. She advises him to leave the area. This makes him angry, and he stands up, ready to hit her. He cannot do anything to her there, and the guard takes him away. In court, an attorney states the exact time when Abby and Andrew lost their lives. He asks Bridget where she was during these times. She tells him she was outside, washing window. The man asks her where Lizzie was and Bridget says she was also outside. Another attorney asks her how she was certain that Lizzie was outside the whole time. Bridget answers she would have noticed her going in. In the cell, Bridget goes to visit Lizzie. She needs to know if she actually means something to Lizzie. The girl is hurt by her doubts. Bridget cries and remarks that she doesn't even know who Lizzie is. Lizzie wants them to try to be together. Bridget points out that Lizzie doesn't see that it is impossible, especially in the world they are living in. There is a flashback from the day of the murder. Lizzie comes to Bridget and gives her a letter. She says to give it to Abby at 9 a.m. Then, Lizzie places her pigeons in a basket, while Bridget washes windows. When the time strikes, Bridget delivers the letter to Abby. This prompts the lady to go to her room to change. We see Lizzie standing there, naked and with a hatchet. She comes to Abby and hits her with lethal blows. She cries while doing it, and Bridget vomits outside. Lizzie washes herself, and the hatchet. She gets dressed, and hears fierce knocking on the door downstairs. Bridget rushes to open it and Andrew comes in. When he sits on the couch, Lizzie brings him some water, and leaves. She sits nervously outside. Bridget also looks nervous. She undresses and goes up to Andrew with the hatchet. Holding it over her head, she trembles. The man insists that she give him the weapon. She cannot bring herself to strike him. At that moment, Lizzie comes in to take the hatchet away. She strikes her father down with it. Bridget can't handle the situation unfolding before her. Later, Lizzie tends to her and tells her to lie down. She goes to the coop and takes a pigeon out of the basket. She resorts to taking its life with the hatchet. After that, she cuts off most of the handle and burns it in the furnace. Back in the cell, Bridget tells Lizzie not to write or look for her. We see Bridget riding on a train and how she reminisces on being with Lizzie. Lizzie stands outside her house with her eyes closed. Perhaps she is relieved that everything is now over. In the end, the jury concluded that Lizzie was not guilty of such a crime. She and her sister were no longer close once the trial was over. Bridget lived on a farm in Montana for the rest of her life. Lizzie lived a rather secluded life and gave away most of her money to the Humane Society.